and welcome to another podcast pontifications with me, Evo Terra. If you're watching this on video, just know that this is not a podcast. This is a video. I'm talking about podcasting on the video, but this is just a video. If you want the podcast, you can get it at podcastpontifications.com. Podcasting is never getting any easier. Never. Sorry. Podcasting, good podcasting, is never getting any easier. Sorry for the immediate bummer of a show, but hey, I like to make you swallow the bitter pill quickly. There have been some new movements, new mentions, new products, new services out, as, as there have been for the last 15 years, that are all designed and all talk about making it easier to podcast. And while all of that is true, sure, there's always going to be some new tool to make it easier, make something easier. Making a good podcast is never, ever going to get any easier. And not only is that okay, you should welcome that. You should welcome the fact that it takes energy and effort to put together a good show, regardless of what the new toys will tell you about. So while you might have seen the new Apple iPad Pro ad that shows how simple it is to create a podcast with the iPod, excuse me, with the new iPad Pro, I wouldn't ex expect the real good quality podcast to immediately rush towards the iPad Pro. Can the iPad Pro do some great things inside for podcasters? Absolutely. It can probably simplify a lot of processes for people who are just trying to get started. But will it really make a good podcast? Is it really part of that process? Probably not. There's a new piece of hardware out. It's called the Rode Podcaster, I think, or the Procaster or something. It's a box. It's a, it's a one-size-fits-all. Wrong way to say it. I don't want to totally disparage it. It's a device that contains all the things you need. It's like your hardware solution to making a, a podcast. Except it's not. I mean, in all honesty, it's to make one type of podcast, which is a lot more akin to morning radio than it is actually podcasts that are, uh, you know, what we would consider a good high-end podcast, which takes lots of energy uh, and effort. And plenty of services are out there that try and make it simpler. Heck, my, the name of my company is Simpler Media Production. I want to simplify the process. That doesn't mean I want to make it any easier. Here's the good news, though. All of these tools I mentioned, and probably lots of other tools out there, there are lots of things that can make individual aspects of podcasting easier. But the whole thing takes a lot of time now and is always going to take a lot of time. Can we talk for a moment about one podcasting company that is a known breakout success in our industry from when they launched in 2014? And that's called Gimlet. Gimlet's the company that makes a bunch of podcasts which are quite popular and they get a lot of attention. Alex Bloomberg, NPR Chops came back and, and made this made this company. They have over 100 employees. Over 100 employees making podcasts. That's all they do, make podcasts. If you look at the high-end shows, I, I quote this show often because it's one of my favorite ones, 20,000 Hertz, an amazing sounding show. If you're interested in good sounds, 20,000 Hertz is definitely worth checking out. 20,000 Hertz spends 125 plus hours on their episodes. Would they like to make it easier? Sure, but they know that's never going to happen. You know why it's never going to happen? When's the last time you watched a movie and you roll and you sat in as the credits rolled through? Lots of names on that list. You know what makes it easier to make a make a movie? What if you didn't have to have any people? or sets. That should simplify the process, right? That should make it easier to make a movie. So let's look at the credit rolls of any animated movie that you've seen recently. They tend to be larger. Because the process of making good on-screen content that audiences want to, well, in this case, spend their hard-earned money on, takes a lot of people. Doesn't matter how simple you make it. Sure, you don't have any actors. Sure, you don't, well, you have voice actors. No, you don't have any craft services table. Okay, but you need a lot more. And even though it's a, a lot of it is done inside of a computer, point and click, yeah, not so much. Same thing with music. And music and podcasting have a lot in common, right? It's a 
instruments, or in this case, it's typically a voice and a microphone and some hardware and some software and some working out. You know, I remember when we were cutting tape back in the day, not to sound like two turbo of an old man, and now it's all done digitally. And you know what? It still takes a crazy amount of time to put out good content. Good content takes time. And that's not me saying it's just being some you know, crotchety old dude. The reality is good content takes time. And while yes, it's becoming easier to plug a microphone into a box and say something and magically have it show up so that your friends and family can say, that was cute. Sure, that's going to get easier. But is that making podcasting any better? Is that making your podcast better? I see a lot of people complaining about how much time it takes to make a good podcast and well, or how much time it takes to get a podcast to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of listeners. Isn't there, aren't there shortcuts? Bemoaning the fact that it takes all this time. Well, just imagine if it didn't take that much time. I mean, right now we already have 600 to 650,000 podcasts. By the end of the year, I predict we'll have close to somewhere in the neighborhood of a million podcasts will be out there. And the vast majority of them, thanks to Sturgeon's Law, suck. So you don't have to worry about that. But if even, even if you want the 10% that don't suck, that's still 100,000 shows. You can't listen to all of those anyhow. It's kind of like all the books that are publishing. You know, Amazon made it a whole lot easier to publish a book. But is the process of writing any easier? There are tools like Scrivener and other great tools that do make it easier to write a book. But do they make it any good? You still need an editor. You still need a designer. You still need all of the things, all your promotions, all you need, things. And those, those don't get any easier. So when you're examining these tools, podcaster, and you're looking for things to, you want it to be easier to make a good show, I counsel you to really rethink that. You should, by all means, look for tools, look for processes, look for people, to simplify processes and streamline it and make it more efficient. But understand that that's not making it easier. Good quality content, I don't care what form, is hard to do. And if it's not hard, it's time consuming. It takes time to put together good quality content. And so just resign yourself to the fact that it's going to take you time. Yes, you can switch to a professional uh, editor like Hindenburg, for example, and that saves you a lot of time. It saved me a huge amount of time. I estimate going to Hindenburg saved me three times the amount of time it was taking me to produce a show I was doing at the time. Wonderful. So did that make it easier? Did that make it faster? Yes, it did. But still, outside of the editing piece, there was still all the rest of the work. So while I simplified some of the process, it still took six hours. This little 10-minute show still takes about total time of man hours put in of it, two, two and a half. Yeah, for a nine-minute show. That's the reality. Good content takes time. It's never going to be any easier to make a good podcast than it is right now. But that doesn't mean you should try to simplify. You should not try, which you should do. It doesn't mean <laughs> you should avoid things that simplify and make easier and make more streamlined some of the processes. You should absolutely do that. Maybe you need help doing that. And if you do need help figuring all that out, guess what I do? That's right, I simplify podcasting, typically for businesses and for professional service providers, but I jump in and make sure the process itself is simple, even though it's still gonna take some time. You can get more information about me by checking out podcastlaunch.pro. You can email me if you'd like to, evo at podcastlaunch.pro, and I shall be back tomorrow with yet another podcast pontifications. Cheers!